Thank you for staying here on Joy News Desk. Now to a rather sad uh, story. The multimedia group Joy Sports and Joy News join in with the entire country and family of A sports journalist Christopher Pokitumon, his heartbreaking demise, which came up uh, in, on, on social media yesterday. Now, who is Christopher and what do you remember about him? Let's watch this report. Go walk up. Niyama nkwe ya kwa me, mi niye mi nimse, se, mi niyo bi ye juma, na se me juma so e niya, me ti me atuwa so. Me juma e en so e niya, o si e yi me di. Number two, e wom se ne yo out crab ye ne bi ni mo ka se, oh, se ne, se ne be ya, rati me juko be chine, mi lo varaya ba chine, se, se me ne se me be bi yo ni diye. Mo renew kwe si ya kwe a kontra, se ne be ya, se gana kwa ya di e, me ti me ki puno. Sports journalist Christopher Poku died Wednesday in the UK where he was receiving treatment after more than four years battle with cancer. His painful struggle with cancer of the rectum had barred the baritone broadcaster from active work engagements. My whole world was shattered, he told Gold.com after he was diagnosed with the disease and went through surgery at the Confuanochi Teaching Hospital on September 24, 2012. Years later, his occasional post on social media were the few public signals that a healing regime was going well. He posted a tweet about his favorite European club Liverpool barely two weeks ago and updated his Facebook post only five days ago. After disappearing from public view for a private fight with cancer, resurfacing on social media to reignite hopes of a return to the airwaves, the popular sports commentator has parted ways with the living. Born in Scotland, Christopher Poku, with a distinct British accent, had a sports presenting career spanning 18 years. It began in the studio of Lava Femme in Kumasi and has seen him cover international tournaments such as the 2000 CAF Nations Cup and the Cannes 2008. One of his big sporting regrets as not to have covered a FIFA World Cup, missing out on all of Ghana's three campaigns. But he wouldn't miss out of recognition for his work, having been named Best Football Commentator and Best Football Journalist in 2008 and 2009. He became the poster boy for sports on Metro TV and later worked with GTV. He has also worked with Accra-based City FM and appeared on multi-TV platforms. He was Administrative Secretary of the Ghana League Clubs Association in 2013. Sports eclipsed his other lesser-known passion, music. It's been a hidden love, but it's been the first love. The former member of KNUSD Mass Choir has an album to his name, Oye Mami, launched in 2011. The 41-year-old left behind a wife, Vivian, and three girls. So ending that report is uh, an excerpt of his song, a uh, song on his album, Oye Mame. Let's go live on the phone now and speak to one of his close colleagues in the industry, Michael OTJ. Hi, Michael. Hey. Hi, my condolences. But uh, how did you get the news <coughs> and uh, how are you taking it? Well, I think most of us have known that um, Chris had known for well, quite a while, but mm. we also knew that as, as an individual, he retained great hope. More often than not, when those around my conversation is with him, he and makes us so much hope and confidence that everything will be well. At some point during the afternoon yesterday, uh, the conversation began to circulate around uh, a lot in our various sports WhatsApp groups. Uh, we needed to be circumspect because uh, his family, especially the ones in Kumasi, needed to know about it. Right? Mm. And that is why most journalists didn't do the usual break. I also think the reaction in many ways the way we handled it was just part of the uh, reaction, just the sort of respect that he had within the industry and sense of sadness. Because this is somebody who is very young, three beautiful daughters, is battled against uh, 
can't stand really, really well. Um, so to give up the man I did yesterday could have been really sad. And I think part of this thing also that it just makes you think about so much. So mm. um, condolences to the family. I think we've lost uh, someone who brought us a great deal to bear in mm. our line of work. And I can mention on Twitter, you know, sometimes you, you, you when, when you lose this life, basically try as much as you can mm. to make an impression where but Sure, Michael. The line of work has both generally. Mm. It is that in brilliant fashion. Mm. Now, talking about leaving an impression, what can you tell us about Christopher? I mean, his person. I, I'm sure you met him uh, quite a number of times. Who is he, and uh, what legacy has he left within the sports uh, fraternity here? Well, I think he was innovative. I mean, the first thing to say, he was very smart. He studied engineering, right, journalism. Mm. Did a fair bit of morning show in Kumasi here in Accra. He worked as an administrative manager of Galka. But I think the, the part where he made the most impression was in sports. And I worked with him closely as a co host at the mm. three for the 2002 World Cup. And he mm. real of basic about rationality said, from the top of his head. You um, he also don't judge how well people know just by the fact he had a, a wonderful way of applying that. I think as well, in modern times, he was an awesome commentator. Mm. Uh, because he understood the language. He used that language well. He did a fair bit of writing as well. Mm. But I think that's why a lot of the things he did was in an area of sports, uh, particularly in his presentation on radio. That's that that's quite me. Mm. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining us here. Michael Otia J is a sports journalist, the senior one is that, uh, sharing his memories of Christopher Poku here with us. But uh, Christopher, born in 1974, had been around uh, the world, some parts of the, uh, of the world, by his eighth birthday, having lived in at least two continents and three countries, Scotland, where he was born, Ghana and Nigeria, where his family relocated and studying at uh, university operated primary schools in the cities of Kumasi and Ibadan. In 1988, a 14-year-old Opoku returned to his native Ghana, continuing his secondary education at St. Hubert Seminary and Kumasi High School, both in the Ashanti region, and successfully gained admission at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, also in Kumasi, but only on the second time of asking. After a year spent studying for a diploma in data processing, he switched to seek and complete a degree program in computer science, bringing to a climax a somewhat uh, convoluted educational circuit. Opoku's early years had not passed without incident. However, uh, a year after his family's return to Ghana from Nigeria, his mom, Madame Dora Opoku, passed away tragically. Opoku discusses her almost teary-eyed and not without a hint of nostalgia that has hardly faded with time. We say may his soul rest in perfect peace. You're watching Joy News Desk. Up next, up next is business with Emmanuel Abwajiriafe.